One day after the Fajr prayer, the Prophet ﷺ asked Bilal radiallahu anhu, he said, Ya Bilal, hadithni bi arja amalin amiltahu fil Islam. He said, tell me of the most exceptional deed you have committed to since becoming Muslim, because I heard your footsteps in paradise. And Bilal radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, I don't think I have anything that is worth mentioning, except that when I make wudu during the day or the night, I pray after that wudu as much as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows me to. Now, like everything else that we've said, this rank is for the companions, but the concept as a whole is for the ummah. And the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that whoever performs wudu, like this wudu of mine, and then offers two rak'ahs of prayer, لا يحدث فيه ما نفسه without allowing his thoughts to go all over the place غفر له ما تقدم من ذنبه then everything that he has done before will be forgiven The wudu is special because of what it encompasses in and of itself and it can be made more special with what you do with it. And of course, it is special because it's tied to the prayer. Now, when you do wudu with dhikr, with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there are two narrations. One of them, which I'll say here, is the one that Abu Sa'id radiallahu ta'ala anhu narrated, that whoever performs wudu, and then after they complete their wudu, they say, Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha la ant, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Glory to you, O Allah, I bear witness that there is no God but you. I seek your forgiveness and I repent to you. He said, He said that Allah puts a seal on that deed, meaning the wudu, and it will be raised to the arsh, to the throne. And nothing is going to break that seal until the day of resurrection. So it's going to stay there and be there for you on the day of judgment. Now, of course, we know the authentic narration of the Prophet ﷺ as well about saying the shahada after wudu. But I promise you, we will get to that a little bit later. The point is that remember that salah itself, prayer itself is nur and burhan and najat. It is a light for you. It is proof for you. It is salvation for you. And so everything that's going to be tied to the salah is also nur. It's also light. And you also find that in other ahadith. So for example, where the Prophet ﷺ mentions the light for those who go to the masajid and what that's going to translate into on the day of judgment. He said, give glad tidings to those who used to walk to the masjid in the dark of a long stretching light on the day of judgment, because that is sincerity, that they were going only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you have light in your right, and then you have light in front of you, which we've already covered. And part of that is going to the masajid. But then there is the actual light of your body, the nur of your body. And Abu Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said that one time the Prophet sallallahu went to the Baqir, to the cemetery, and he said, Assalamu alaikum dara qawmin mu'mineen, wa inna insha'Allah bikum nahiqoon. Peace be on to you, O abode of believing ones. And insha'Allah we will join you soon. And he says, Waditu anna qad ra'ayna ikhwanana. I wish we could see our brothers. Now, if you're there in the graveyard, you would think that He's talking either about the brothers that are with him or the brothers that have departed. So the Sahaba who are with the Prophet ﷺ, they said, Awalasna ikhwana ya Rasulullah, aren't we your brothers, O Messenger of Allah? And the Prophet ﷺ said, Antum ashabi, you are my companions. My brothers and sisters are those who have not yet even been born. So they said to the Prophet ﷺ, well, how are you going to recognize those of your ummah who have not yet been born, ya Rasulullah? So, the Prophet ﷺ gives them this example. He says, tell me, suppose that a man had all black horses and some of those black horses had white streaks and patches on their limbs and on their foreheads. Wouldn't the owner of those horses be able to distinguish them from the rest? And they said, Bala ya Rasulullah, of course, O Messenger of Allah. So he said, I will recognize them when they are given their records in their right hands and I will recognize them as their descendants run before them. And my brothers will come on the day of judgment with light on their faces and on their arms and on their legs from what? From their wudu. And I will be waiting for them at the hawl, at the fountain. And so the light of wudu is literal light on the body on the day of judgment. Nabu Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, I heard the Prophet saying, 
that on the day of judgment, my followers will be called Al-Ghurru Al-Muhajjalun. And Al-Ghurru Al-Muhajjalun means people that are branded on the forelock and on the forearms. And it will be from the trace of wudu. And whoever can increase them, the area of their radiance, of their light on the day of judgment should do so. And by the way, the ulama say that this is not like, a, you know, go beyond the areas of wudu. This means doing wudu regularly, consistently, and making sure that you touch every position or every part that the Prophet ﷺ instructed. The Prophet ﷺ also said in another narration, he said, that on the day of judgment, a believer's adornment will reach to the extent that the wudu reaches on their bodies. And then you have this hadith that brings it all together, the wudu, the salah, the masajid. The Prophet ﷺ said, Ala adullukum, ala ma yamhu Allahu bihi al khataya wa yarfa'u bihi al darajat. Shall I not tell you about something, a deed, by which Allah will forgive all of your sins and raise your status in unimaginable ways? They said, Bala ya Rasulullah, what is it, O Messenger of Allah? And he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Isbaghu al wudu ala al makarih, wa kathratu al khuta ila al masajid, wa intidaru al salati ba'd al salah. Fadharikum al ribat, dharikum al ribat. The Prophet said that you do wudu even in the difficult days. You know, when it's cold or when it's hard. For whatever reason, you do wudu at those times. And then increase your steps to the masajid. That doesn't mean turn around and walk backwards. No, make sure that you walk frequently to the masajid and wait for one prayer until the other prayer. And the Prophet ﷺ said that is like guarding the fortress. I mean, that is such a complete way of life to guarantee nur for yourself on the Day of Judgment, light for yourself on the Day of Judgment. And the wudu is the first part of the purification process, literally. And the Prophet ﷺ said that when a Muslim or a believer washes his face in wudu, every single sin that he committed with his eyes is going to be washed away with the last drop of water. And when he washes his hands, every single sin that he committed with his hands is going to be washed away with the last drop of water. And when he washes his feet, every single sin that he committed with his feet will be washed away with the last drop of water. And the Prophet ﷺ says, Hatta yakhruja naqiyan min al until he emerges completely purified from sin. In another narration, the Prophet ﷺ said, his sins will depart from his body, even from under his fingernails. Now, what's the logic of this? Wudu literally wipes out sins. And what that translates into with everything we've already spoken about, when the darkness of sin is removed, it's filled with light. And that's true of the light in the heart that comes through repentance after the darkness of sin. And it's true of the light of the bodies on the day of judgment that comes through wudu. And that's just one of the things that becomes so crucial as you prepare to cross directly over the darkest abode of the fire. <laughs> فهو في عيشة راضية